The scripture that I'm going to be preaching from is very short. It's a single verse. And it is found in the first letter of Peter, the third chapter, verse 18. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. The sermon this morning is entitled, What's in Your Wallet? And that sounds more like a, an advertising slogan than an Easter message. Uh, and of course it is an advertising slogan. For the past 10 years, Capital One Cards has been asking that question with the help of America's most lovable barbarians. It all started with the barbarians representing the destructiveness of high interest rates. With a Capital One card in your wallet, though, your family could be protected, and the bar barbarians moved on to pillage your neighbors. Soon the barbarians were out of work, and they had to pick up odd jobs like flight attendants and shoe salesmen, amusement ride operators. This allowed the barbarians to get their own Capital One card, and soon their wallets contained the Capital One card, and they were earning triple rewards. And now their wallets contain the new Capital One Venture card that allows them to go on wonderful vacation adventures. And so you see them knocking down sand castles with their battering rams and jogging on the beach with shapely young women. These are great commercials. They're funny, they're odd, they're memorable. What's in your wallet? With a credit card, you can be saved. And life can be a day at the beach. But as catchy as these commercials are, we know that life just isn't that easy. Only little kids believe that you can buy anything as long as you have a credit card. If you actually have one, you know how hard you have to work to pay them off. And it's the same way with Easter, I think. To little kids, Easter is easy. You tell them Jesus rose from the dead, and they go, so? They've watched cartoons. Cartoon characters are always coming back to life. They've heard ghost stories and seen zombie movies, played video games. Hey, you just hit the button and start over. You get a brand new life. But those who faced real death know it's not so easy. When someone you love has died, when something in you has died, it's not so easy. And you know that what's in your wallet won't save you or make your life a day at the beach. It just doesn't work that way. You don't have enough in your wallet to buy new life. You don't have enough in your wallet to buy healing. You don't have enough in your wallet to buy your way back to God. And that's why the cross was necessary. That's why this Easter means everything. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. I remember when I first learned that lesson about wallets. I was maybe 12 or 13 years old and I'd gotten a paper route, so I finally had my own money. And of course I needed something to carry it in, so I got a wallet for the very first time. Wow, did I feel like somebody. A real grown-up wallet and my own money in my pocket. We lived next to a park, and, and one day, not long after I got my wallet, I was walking through the park, and as kids will do, I saw a rock, and I picked it up. Now you can maybe guess where this is going. Twelve-year-old boy with a rock in his hand. The neighbor had this beautiful lamp post in their backyard. And I took that rock and I threw it at the lamp post. I don't know if I was trying to hit the pole or if I just had a rock and needed something to throw it at, but the rock sailed right through the glass and broke the bulb and knocked the top off the lamp post. For a moment I was in shock over what I'd done. 
I didn't even have time to, to think of running because instantly the owner came flying out of the house running towards me. There was no denying my guilt. The evidence was lying right there on the ground all around me. I couldn't lie my way out of this. I'd broken something of value. And I tell you this story, even though I know none of you ever did anything like that as a kid. <laughs> but you know, we do things like that every single day. We break things that are valuable through thoughtless, sinful actions. We destroy parts of God's creation. We damage valuable relationships. We break trust. We crush people's spirits. We vandalize God's commands. And self-centeredly and sinfully, we follow our own impulses without taking into consideration our neighbors. And we do it without even thinking. We are all sinners. We are all guilty. And worst of all, we too have hurt the owner. We've all hurt God, broken our relationship with God. Yes, you could say, even made God angry. God does not take it lightly when, for whatever reason or excuse, we break things. There is such a thing as the wrath of God, a righteous anger over sin. And I saw a flicker of that on the face of my neighbor as he came charging across the yard towards me after I had destroyed his lamppost. <laughs> 